Nick here with your Friday new product post. We've got some fun products for you robot fans, so let's dive right in. First up, we have a new fingerprint scanner. It probably looks familiar because we've carried the older version of this fingerprint scanner for uh, a couple weeks now, and I did a video on how to use it actually. And this one is exactly the same, except they've upgraded the memory, so that now it holds 10 times more fingerprint data. You'll notice it looks pretty much the same as the older version. The only difference is they've added an IC on the back and it allows it to hold 200 fingerprints in the memory on the board as opposed to just 20 like the older one. It also allows them to do some heavier computation that um, makes it possible for the board to recognize a fingerprint at any orientation. So it'll do 360 degree fingerprint recognition. So it's not going to be as picky about uh, whether or not you put your finger on the pad uh, in exactly the same orientation as you had when you registered the fingerprint. These are really great modules if you want to do some fingerprint recognition for like uh, door locks or for your computer, anything like that, um, but don't want to have to write all of the back end for it because this has everything on the board that you need and it communicates with serial and if you want to see the video on how to use these fingerprint scanners we'll put a link at the end of the video so you can go check that out so this week i thought we'd do something a little bit different we got these really cool robot wheels in from creative robotics and so i thought what we would do is just build a robot with them uh, in real time right here on the video so that you get a feel for how easy these things really are to use so um, let's just jump right in and get started. So here are all the parts that we're going to use uh, for the robot. We've got some ribbon cables, a little bit of assorted hardware. The Arduino Uno is going to act as the brains for our robot. We need some kind of sensor, so we're going to use the sharp infrared sensor as a proximity detector. And of course, uh, these hub EE wheels, which are going to serve both as the motor and the actual wheels of the robot. First thing I'm doing is just sort of mocking things up and uh, seeing how everything's going to fit together, trying to figure out where I'm going to screw the wheels to the proto shield. I'm just going to mark where I want to drill holes. Next I will drill the holes in the proto shield where I marked them out so that I can actually put some bolts through the shield and actually attach the wheels to the robot. And next we're going to go ahead and solder headers to the proto shield and that way we can uh, connect it to the Arduino. Next I'm going to take the ribbon cable that fits to the hubby wheels and just cut it directly in half and that'll give me two pigtails so that I can wire each of the wheels up. Now I'm going to take those ribbon connectors and I'm going to go ahead and solder them to the proto board. I have to make sure that each one is soldered to the correct pin on the Arduino. Of course the ground and the power will go to the ground and power parts of the Arduino. And then uh, there's a PWM channel for each side and I need to make sure that those go to pins on the Arduino that are PWM capable. Here I'm just uh, adding some standoffs on it that'll work as sort of legs that'll scoot around on the ground and keep it from tipping over. The one on the front I'm actually adding a right angle bracket to so that I can mount our sharp infrared sensor to the front of the robot. The last thing I've got to do is just plug in all of the ribbon cables. So now I'm gonna hook the robot up to my laptop here and write a little bit of code to handle the uh, collision avoidance stuff with the infrared sensor. Now that the code's written, uh, I've plugged in power and realized that the lie power shield just doesn't have quite enough oomph to drive these motors like I'd like. So I got rid of that and I replaced it with some AA batteries. And here it is, our finished robot. We've got uh, two wheels, a little bit of stabilizing hardware, stands up straight, and if I plug in the power, what it should do is just drive forward until it sees a, uh, an obstacle and then turn around and try to find another way around. Here we go. Oh yeah, that works really well. Look at that. Of course, it can only see directly in front of it, so uh, if I just let it go, it would run off the edge of the table. I don't want to do that. Part of what made this project so easy to do is the fact that I was using these Hub E wheels from Creative Robotics. These are really cool little wheels because they actually incorporate a motor, a motor driver, and a quadrature encoder all inside the wheel itself. So there's no extra 
motor or extra hardware hanging out outside of the wheel. Um, when you open up the box, uh, there's just two parts in here. The hubby wheel itself, which is uh, really cool. It's all self-contained. Uh, the hub in the center sort of uh, houses all of the electronics and the motor, and then the wheel turns around it. And it actually has two mounting holes on it that mate with the right angle bracket that's included. The other cool thing is that each of these mounting holes, uh, you'll notice they're sort of cross-shaped. That is exactly what you think it is. It is Lego compatible. So if you have the little Lego lugs that have the cross on one side and the little uh, round barrel shape on the other, that'll plug straight in there and into your uh, Lego NXT or uh, Lego Mindstorms kits. So if you're working on a Lego robot, these things are great as well. We've also got a few more accessories for these. We've got the ribbon cable that I used in the robot. All of these wheels and accessories use a type of connector called the uh, micro-match connector. It's kind of like a standard ribbon cable connector, but it's um, polarized and it's made by AMP and you can get it from most large electronics suppliers. Um, but we do carry a few of them. If you want to make your own ribbon cable, to connect multiple of these wheels together. Um, we also sell the connector as the crimp connector for a ribbon cable. Put your ribbon cable through here, crimp it down using a clamp or a pair of pliers will probably work fine. And you can put multiple of these on one ribbon cable and there are great instructions on how to run multiple wheels on a single cable daisy chain together on the Hubby website, which we've linked to from the product page. We also carry the connectors themselves, the female side of the connector. So if you're designing your own board based around the Hubby wheels, you can actually uh, include these in your design and then solder them directly to your board and then uh, hook it up with ribbon cables and keep everything nice and clean. We do have a breakout board for the connector that these ribbon cables will mate to. The breakout board is really simple. It's just the connector and it breaks out to a single row of 0.1 inch spaced headers. So you can put some pin headers on that, plug it into a breadboard, and breadboard using your hubby wheels uh, very easily. Finally, we have this great driver board from Creative Robotics that actually allows you to drive uh, four hubby wheels hooked together and uh, they'll all get the same drive signals. So it uh, routes the drive signal to each of the wheels. It also uh, distributes power to each wheel and it brings all of the encoder outputs from each of the wheels back to this header on the front of the board so that you can uh, either put this to a breadboard or um, also it brings them all back to a single micro match connector so you can hook it up to the rest of your system the same way you would if you had one wheel. So it's sort of like taking the uh, input for one wheel and using it to drive four wheels. So that's everything we've got for this week. I hope you enjoyed the hubby buggy robot build. Uh, I'm going to put together a wish list of all the parts that I used in this build and make sure that it's posted below the video so you can check that out if you want to build your own. And also don't forget to check out the fingerprint scanner video uh, to learn more about how you can use the fingerprint scanners in your projects. As always, check the post below for more new products and uh, Rob will be back next week so he will see you for next week's Friday new product post.